after a decade after her death she was uh, very well known because uh, her uh, stories actually started becoming very popular so this is kate chopin after her grief subsides that is comes down uh, she begins to look for opportunities for being free all these years she was confined to her house only so louis begins to sob now louis begins to cry when josephine gives the news of brentley's death hello everyone i am dr shalini professor of english vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore today we are here to understand one of the lessons prescribed by university of mysore for second sem bca we are going to discuss about the story of an r by kate chopin this is a very interesting story a humorous story for you to understand let us see what is there in today's session today's session we are going to discuss about the author first then we'll move on to the theme at last we'll understand the summary of this lesson so let us start with the introduction of the author the author is kate chopin she was born catherine uh, flaherty she was an american author she was very well known for her short stories and also novels most of her novels are based in the city louisiana so her major works uh, were only the collection of two uh, short stories and also the two novels so only these are into her account but after a decade after her death she was uh, very well known because uh, her uh, stories actually started becoming very popular so this is kate chopin we'll now understand the theme of this story so what is there in this story so the story of an r is about a lady uh, called louise mallard and uh, she was a woman who was traditionally victorian marriage kind of a lady so she was into that marriage and she receives a news about her husband's death in a train accident so she is confined only to her family she is confined only to her house and now she receives the news of the death of her husband in an accident after her grief subsides that is comes down uh, she begins to look for opportunities for being free all these years she was confined to her house only but her husband's death actually it comes as a freedom to her so what is it that you have to concentrate here you need to concentrate the feminist approach so early feminist approach whatever was there it was actually confined to that house only but now there is a change here she questions that attitude about that woman who would be uh, like how she should be and how would she react after the death of her husband so that is what is shown in this uh, story then the protagonist challenges protagonist is the major character that leads the story here here it is a female character so the protagonist challenges the belief of uh, this uh, patriarchal society the society which is uh, headed by a man okay a male dominant society that women are nothing without the husband as it begins to embrace the future alone like whenever she thinks about the future it is nothing without the husband was the approach of the the women that time but now she challenges that how she can determine the direction of her life is what she starts to decide after her husband's death so this is the theme of the story just a background for you to understand let us now understand the characters which are there in this story so to begin with it is the protagonist that is louis mallard she is the protagonist and uh, her true feelings about her, her life and her husband's death are revealed in this story to the reader like what she feels about the reader how she feels about the her life after the death of her husband is what the reader is going to understand okay so she has a heart condition she has heart trouble so for this reason only her husband's death was not disclosed to her immediately okay so it was a very delicate situation wherein she was uh, supposed to be given the news in a very delicate way in a very uh, subtle way okay so this is the situation she does not reject the idea but embraces it immediately after it is given to her that is the death of her husband she has to accept it one or the other day isn't it so that is what she accepts now so she secretly evolves into a state of elation means all these years she was confined to her house only but after the death of her husband she sits and thinks for some time and she goes to the state of an elation elation means you go to a higher state 
okay so she goes to that stage and all the possibilities of uh, freedom she starts thinking of okay so she gets to think in all different different ways wherein she is able to understand how to lead her life so this story revolves around this protagonist only and her self talk her brief utterance of what is freedom and uh, what is the freedom according in her thoughts is what she thinks about okay so this is louis mallard then we have another character josephine josephine is louis sister she is the sister of the protagonist and she is the one who breaks the news of the sister's husband's death to the sister that is uh, brentley mallard is the a uh, husband of uh, louis mallard and his death is what she is talking about here so josephine has only one line in the story that is a very minor character she gets to speak only one line in the story next we have another character that is richards so richards is a friend of uh, brentley mallard so the person who has died that is the husband of the protagonist so richards is a friend of his so he brings the news of train accident that has killed brentley so he is the one who gets the news he is an entirely silent character he doesn't speak at all much with no thoughts or lines so neither his thoughts are expressed here nor his dialogues are given here in this story he just contributes to the plot's development he is the only person who is kind of bridge to the development of the plot because he is the one who brings the news and that is the major turn in the plot of the story so that is what he does he is the only uh, reason for that then he is only reported he has nothing to speak also he is only reported narration okay so only that reported narration of bringing this bad news that is what shows the presence of richards in this story okay so this was another character now we have brentley mallard that is the husband of the protagonist so he was characterized by no one but his wife means his wife only talks about him so that is how we get to know about brentley mallard and uh, that is uh, louis i am talking about so uh, he refers to her as like oppression it's a kind of oppression or uh, powerful uh, will bending her something like that so she is the one who talks about him using these words okay though he is an oppression though he is a powerful will bending her it is also love that he is talking about there so brentley plays a silent role he affects uh, louis and her outlook in that uh, cage uh, life okay that means he confines her to her house only so he plays a very silent role we do not know anything much about him but only because the wife tells that this person is like this we only know about him okay so that is what i mean to say that he is characterized by no one but his wife she is the one who tells about him so we don't know anything about him like in other uh, works and all we read the dialogues of the character we read about the character and we know about him okay we get to hear his words and all then we frame a picture but here we cannot frame any picture of uh, brentley we can only see uh, brentley's uh, character through this louis eyes okay so only that is mentioned in this story so she feels the loss of brentley only momentarily that is the husband's loss is felt by this louis momentarily and uh, probably he would not have expected that from a wife okay so suppose a wife loses the husband then she would cry then uh, she would uh, miss that husband but it was something different so then uh, like richards means the friend he is also talked about and is doesn't get any dialogues to speak there he doesn't speak his thoughts he doesn't get any dialogues there but his presence is known there that's it okay so these are the only four characters that are there in this short story i can say okay we'll start with the summary to begin with louis mallard has uh, heart trouble that is what we get to know so she must be informed carefully about her husband's death is what they uh, keep discussing that so her husband is dead now okay brentley mallard is dead now louis has to be given that news but she has a heart trouble we cannot just break the news as it is because uh, she might also experience some variation in her health so her sister josephine what does she do she goes checks the situation and then she talks there okay so louis husband's uh, friend richards is uh, the person who uh, brings about the news he learned about a railroad disaster so he gets to see a newspaper and there brentley's photo was there under the people who are deceased okay the people who were there in that uh, railway accident so those photos were published in that newspaper and there he could see this brentley's picture and he gets the news that he is no more he is killed in the rail accident so he was in the newspaper office as i told you so in that list he sees brentley's name 
So Louis begins to sob. Now Louis begins to cry when Josephine gives the news of Brentley's death. Okay. So she just goes upstairs to her room and she just closes the door of her room. She didn't want to be disturbed. She just tells Josephine not to disturb her and she goes to her room and closes the door um, staying alone over there. So Louis just sits down and she starts thinking of the after effects okay she looks out at an open window so here you can just uh, observe the hint that the author has given uh, now the her husband is dead one door is closed okay the door of her room is closed but now there is another door that is open that is the door of the window so when one door closes there is another door that opens isn't it? So this way, uh, the author has hinted like uh, she is looking at the open uh, door of the window there and she sees trees and she also smells this approaching rain and also hears a peddler yelling out what he is selling. So she gets to see the outer world. Now all these days she never used to concentrate on that but now she gets an opportunity to see that. Okay, She has nothing else to do now. She just has to mourn her husband's death. So now she gets an opportunity to look out of the window. That is what she sees over there. She hears someone singing also. Okay, she hears someone singing and also the sounds of sparrows. That means she is slowly getting exposed to nature. She is slowly getting in contact with nature. There are fluffy clouds in the sky. So she is trying to see the beauty of nature now. Uh, she is young. Okay, she is quite young with lines around her eyes. She was still crying. She was sobbing, you remember. So she was still crying. She gazes into the distance. Though she is crying, she is trying to explore what is there in nature, what is there outside. So she just looks at something that is there at a distance. So she feels very apprehensive. She feels uh, somewhat uh, very bad, embracing, um, apprehensive, like a kind of uh, she got angry or something like that. And she tries to suppress the building emotions. What kind of emotions are building in her? She tries to suppress it within her, but she was not able to do it. She now looks at the window. She looks out of the window. She is trying to look at the beauty of nature now. Okay, but she is not able to suppress the emotions uh, that are getting built up inside her. Okay, so she begins repeating that word free. Okay, she gets that word in her mind that is she is free uh, to herself over and over again. She keeps on repeating that word free, free, free in her mind. So her heart starts beating quickly. She feels very warm. That feeling of freedom gives her that warmth inside her. Okay, so her mindset starts changing now. So she has come into the room with a lot of grief, but now she is able to feel how free she is. Okay, she is comparing the situations now. Before when her husband was there, now that is the afterlife when her husband is not there. So that is what she is thinking of now. Then Louis knows that she is going to cry when she sees Brentley's corpse. Corpse is, uh, that means a uh, dead body. Okay, so she knows she is going to cry. So his hands were tender. She's talking about her husband now. So his hands were tender and he always looked at her lovingly. Though she felt he was oppressing, she had that love towards him. Okay, so she imagines the year ahead. So the coming years she imagines that is without her husband, which belong only to her now. Now, all these years her life was with her husband, but now it is only with her. So she has a life only with her now and she spreads her arms out joyfully. So she spreads her arms now. Okay. So she is trying to embrace that feeling of freedom. So she spreads her arms now and she anticipates something. What does she anticipate? She wants to be free. She anticipates to be free. Expectations are building up in her. She is trying to be free now. She will be free and she will be on her own. Nobody else in her life, isn't it? Without anyone to oppress her. There is nobody else to stop her from doing whatever she wants to do. So there is nobody to oppress her. She thinks that all women and men oppress one another even if they do it out of kindness. So she always knew that her husband of hers actually is uh, loving. But at the same time he was oppressing also. Okay, that means even though she uh, did it out of love, even though he uh, looked at her lovingly, he used to confine her to house only. Okay, so that is what she's trying to say over here. Though she was uh, loving towards him and he was loving towards her, even the men and uh, women actually, she's talking about uh, generally, though they do it out of love, it is nothing but oppression only. Okay, so that is what she uh, says over here. 
So Louis knows that she often felt love. You can uh, observe this. She often felt love for Brentley, but tells herself that none of that matters anymore. Now, she often felt love towards her husband, but now that doesn't at all matter. Now he is not there at all. And uh, now it is of no use also thinking of whatever love she used to show towards him or he used to show towards her. So that is what she is talking about here. Okay, she feels ecstatic. She feels very happy, okay, with her newfound sense of independence. Now she is a kind of free, right? Her husband is not there to ask her whatever she wants to do, she can do. She is not confined to her house only. She has to live her own life. So obviously she has to go out and all. So this is what comes to her mind. And because of that, she feels very ecstatic, means extremely happy, she starts feeling. So Josephine comes to her door begging Louis to come out. She tells her to come out of the room there, warning her that she will get sick if she doesn't. So she tells her if you don't come out, your situation will be bad. You are going to get sick is what she tells. So she tells her to come out of the house. So Louis tells her to go away. So she doesn't listen to that. She just tells her to go away from there. So she fantasizes about all the days. Okay, she just thinks about the life after her husband's uh, death and all. So she fantasizes about all the days and years ahead, that is the future life and hopes that she lives a long life. She wants to live a longer life wherein she can forget all this oppression and she can enjoy her life. So she feels that she has to live longer in order to enjoy all these. Then what happens? She thinks all these and now she thinks it's a time once she has got a control of all her emotions, she opens the door and uh, Josephine walk, start walking down, okay? So she has gone upstairs. Now both of them, they start coming down the stairs where Richards is waiting. So Richards was waiting. Now this is only the mention that Richards is over there, okay? We don't have any dialogue for Richards there. So we only know that Richards is a person who is waiting there who has brought the news, okay? So they both, just Louis opens the door, comes with Josephine and they both walk down as uh, Richards was waiting there. Unexpectedly, this front door opens and a person comes in. Who is that? It is Brentley who comes in. So the husband of Louis comes in there. He hadn't been in the train accident or even aware that one has happened. So he was not at all there in the scene. He doesn't even know that the train accident has taken place. Okay. So there was no idea how the photo has been uh, printed there, but he was not at all there in the incident place. He was not even aware that an incident has taken place also. So Josephine screams there. Richards somehow tries to block the view of uh, Louis because Louis has a heart problem. If she sees her husband, again, she'll be shocked. Okay. Now she has already accepted that her husband is no more. Now she sees her husband so that the husband is alive. So that news also has to be given to her very uh, slowly now. Okay. But Richards tries to block Louis from uh, seeing Brentley, but he was not able to do it. Louis has seen her husband now. Okay. She gets to see her husband who was standing there and she just collapses. So that collapsing and all that situation is not explained here, but we only know that doctors arrive. Okay. After Louis collapses there, doctors arrive and they say that Louis died of heart attack. Okay. Before she was to die uh, of the heart attack that was supposed to be caused by grief. But here she is happy to see her husband probably or maybe the happiness of freedom that was there in her uh, heart already. Okay. So the author hasn't told it clearly whether it is the happiness that the, her husband is back or is it because of the happiness that is this uh, Louis has experienced uh, looking at her husband or maybe the thought of freedom. So that is not mentioned here. But we get to know that she died of the shock given by this happiness. So this uh, happiness had given a shock to her and she has died because of a heart attack caused by happiness. Okay. So here we need to analyze what is this happiness for? Okay. Well, this heart attack, we know the reason is happiness, but why was this happiness? Was it because of the thought of freedom or is it because she has seen that husband has come and she had a shock and she died because she will not be able to get that freedom anymore. So the author has not clearly mentioned, maybe that can be a satire towards the Victorian women who were there in that time. So this was the summary of this story. Okay. The story of an R. So we talk about one hour over here because all this takes place in one hour and that uh, changeover that happens only in one hour after the news of death of Brentley. Okay. So this was the summary. Just watch the video, read the passage. So you'll be able to understand it better. 
Okay. So that's all for today. Let us meet again with another more interesting session. So till then, keep learning. See you soon. Take care. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.